Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Today I'd like to do sort of a two-in-one video. Uh, I recently completed a Citadel gaming board set. This is um, uh, GW's uh, uh, Realm of Battle Boards set. And this customer requested that I finish it to match some of the Battle in a Box, uh, I think is what they're called, pieces um, that are available from another company. And the thing um, about those pieces is that they're finished with static flocks. So I wanted to um, do a static grass finish on this board. And I used a tool that I've mentioned in the past before, but I've never done really a review on or a demonstration of. It's the um, Scooter Static Stick. This is a static grass applicator. And we're going to be talking about this and how it was used on these boards, um, as well as um, some of the advantages I think it provides over maybe other ways of applying static grass. But um, first, I just wanted to give you an overview of the boards, um, what was done with them, and then we can talk a little bit more about the static stick. So I wanted to give you a, a couple descriptions of the boards, and then I'll show you some photos of them uh, as they were laid out on the floor so you can get a sense of how they all come together. But in general, um, the customer requested basically a few things. One was to try to match the color of the, the soil and the rocks to the battle in a box uh, pieces, and I'll show you those photos right here. And then uh, he asked also that I fill in the pits uh, that contain the skulls on the boards with resin to give them the murky water look, which I also did. And, uh, and as a final touch, of course, I wanted to match the static grass. Now, it's hard to tell from the book, uh, from the um, Battle in a Box pieces, um, what static grass they use, but it looks like a GW clone. So I went with my, my typical GW clone application on this, and it should provide a fairly close match. Um, so you can see um, here what I did then to try to match those pieces is I went in with a slightly, now of course color rendering is always difficult on video, uh, but um, you know I went in with a slightly bluer tint to the rocks and to the pathway. Then I have traditionally, when I usually do stonework, I sort of muddy it with a bit of brown, and in this case I added, it kept a cooler look as the rocks in those pictures looked pretty cool and they didn't want a very warm rock finish, so I went with a slightly cooler look. Again, making a best guess approximate to match. And then I went in uh, and painted the entire board with um, pretty close to my normal brown colors, but I went in with something a little bit um, brighter as the foundation and a little bit more muted on the highlight. So it's not quite as, as big a transition in color between the, the top and the bottom. And that seemed to be kind of what was done on those pieces, so hopefully that will match as well. And then, of course, I applied static grass to all of the boards, um, and you can see that in the whole board set up here. Take a look at that. So one of the things that you can't get from those photos, though, is an up-close look at how the static grass actually is applied. So we're gonna we're gonna go flying handheld here. So uh, bear with me, um, but. Um, one of the things, let's see, here we go. One of the things that um, a static grass applicator allows you to do a little more easily is to fade the grass's density. So you can, you know, sort of apply it in a lighter area and then, you know, by shaking it more vigorously a longer period of time over some areas, you can get a denser um, application of the grass. So that's one of the nice features of it. The other thing that I like is that by allowing the grasses to stand up on end, let's see if I can get this. So one of the things that the static grass applicator does, of course, is it stands the grass up on end. And I'm going to show you um, that again in a second when I demonstrate the scooter stick. But one of the things that I really like about it is, now it gives a very nice finish overall in the broad filled areas. I love the texture. It feels kind of nice on the fingertips, um, but it gives nice even density. Um, and it, you know, it sort of looks like grass a little bit more than applying it um, with a shaker bottle, let's say. But on little tiny tufts like these, I just love the individual clump appearance that this provides where each of these little clumps is standing up rather than a little mashed pad of, of fibers. They really look a little bit more akin to the sill floor type tufts that you can buy and apply individually. And that's one of the real big advantages of using a static grass applicator for static grass. 
And one thing I forgot to mention is that the set also included the uh, Games Workshop um, Gaming Hill. I forget the exact name of it, um, but it's their One Piece Hill. And uh, I found this kind of interesting. This is the only piece of G Games Workshop terrain I've ever seen that doesn't have a skull on it. Go figure. I think because it's one of the oldest pieces they have. Uh, but in any case, um, painted it to match um, so that it would blend in with the rest of the terrain. And um, you, know, you can sort of get a sense of... If it focuses, there we go. Um, you know, it's actually, even though it's an older piece and the rocks have a slightly different texture than the rocks on the uh, board uh, set, it still matches quite well in appearance and overall feel. So they've done a nice job of tying in their older pieces to their newer product line. Um, and I like the way that this set uh, came out actually quite a bit overall. So this is the Scooter's Static Stick. It's basically a PVC, uh, PVC pipe with um, a cup on the end and then he's done his wiring himself he's got a plate for conducting electricity here which connects to the wire screen that is inside and then you have a um, grounding probe which draws the um, I believe the negative charge and then you attach that to where you want to uh, spread your your application and you shake it after you press the button the device is powered both by a 9 volt battery which fits in the bottom here or the um, included um, 110 volt plug which you can plug into the wall I find that the plug which I'm gonna plug in right now I find the plug provides um, a little bit more juice and gives it um, a little bit more of a static charge, which I prefer. I figure, you know, why not get the most? Be warned, though, that this device does produce quite an electric charge, and I've popped myself on more than one occasion using it. So if you have, like, a pacemaker or any kind of sensitivity to electrical charges, I would not recommend this device, as it really does, you know... It generates a pretty strong static charge. Um, one of the problems is that when you're using it, if your hand moves down, let me discharge that, and you uh, make the contact with this button here while you're holding it, you automatically become the conduit from the switch to this button, and then you'll shock yourself. Um, if you get too close and you're not paying attention, you can shock yourself. It's not fatal. Does it hurt? A little bit, but in any case, obviously I'm not dead. Um, but, you know, you have to use some common sense. And he includes um, some, you know, basic uh, uh, instructions on the side here as well. And um, that's the company that produces it is um, fastmotiongraphics.com. He does this as a side project, and I'll include a link to that in the description down below as well. A couple things about the design of it. One is that um, he's uh, when he sent this to me originally, it was electrical taped around the side to hold the cup onto the top, and eventually that slipped and the cup came loose, so I've reattached it with duct tape. I don't mind doing a few quick repairs on something, uh, but it is something to be aware of in terms of build quality. Second thing to mention is that the grate on top, the original grate, which you can see here, is a large mesh opening. Now, I found that um, two millimeter grass was coming out of this a little more quickly than I liked, so what I did is I cut a plastic screen and inserted that into it with an opening so that I could still get some of that full access to the larger screen but retard some of the application so it doesn't come out all at once. Um, depending on you know going through the uh, multi-board set that I did here for the Realm of Battleboard, I filled this cup dozens and dozens of times. So really um, I didn't want it all coming out all at once as I'm going through plenty of it to start with. Um, so how does the static uh, stick work? Well let me show you um, first a preliminary test. On these two popsicle sticks, just to show you a side-by-side -side comparison, this uh, top stick I used the static stick for, and this bottom stick I merely applied PVA glue and then sprinkled on the static flock. Now you can see from the side, let's do the um, static stick application first. There we go. Notice how it gives it a bit of a porcupine appearance where all the grass blades are sticking out from each other. That's because they're, they're electrically charged and light charges repel. So the grass naturally tries to get away from itself on the ends um, that, you know, the positive charge on the top, negative charge on the bottom. So they spread out, uh, but you can keep applying it and filling in those little gaps and eventually you get a nice even grass coverage. When you apply it without the static stick, what you end up with is some of the hairs sticking up but definitely much more of a matted appearance, very uneven, and it doesn't really have a grass-like appearance. This is the way most people apply static grass. They use maybe a little shaker bottle um, or um, 
you know, they just drip it right on or, you know, shake it right on from right out of the container. And it's never going to produce the same effect as a static grass applicator. I've been wanting one for many years now, and the price is what had always deterred me. Typically, the ones that are sold by um, large railroad companies run about $250, $270. Uh, this is a $90 static grass applicator, which to me was the excellent price that I wanted to get in at, as I didn't want to have to deal with the electronics and the soldering and the wiring of all of this. It is, of course, $90, and you can build your own, as um, Girl Painting has done and several other um, modelers on YouTube have shown you how to do it. The thing about it, though, is that many of the homemade models don't generate the higher static electric charges that some of these you know, more professional models do, and I really wanted something that I could shake from a height that was, you know, uh, comfortable and not worry that I was losing static charge. You know, I, even though sometimes I do make close applications, I wanted something that was going to give me the most charge so I didn't have to worry about distance from the, um, the point of application. Thought I'd give you a quick test of it just so you can see how it's used. It's actually relatively simple. Um, this is two millimeter, whoop, I should be in frame. This is two millimeter static grass uh, produced by um, uh, Scenic Express, I believe. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm just gonna put a couple pinches in the cup here. Nothing fancy here. We'll do this real quick, so just so you get a sense. Put your cap back on, put a little glue down. And we're just gonna, we're really quick. Now you need um, an adhesive that conducts electricity. It requires ions for that. And pretty much any adhesive you're gonna be using is probably gonna have free ions in it. So I wouldn't worry too much about the uh, actual adhesive you use. In this case, I'm just using white PVA glue. And um, I find that you can actually get it to stick without using the probe. Notice, oh, by the way, I put the probe on a bamboo, uh, uh, you know, shaft so that I could keep it further away from my hand. I found when I was trying to handle this little tiny uh, paper clip that, um, yeah, I'm a little bit too close to the point of application and I was getting zapped a little more often than I liked. So by putting it on this uh, stick, I could then, you know, be comfortably away from the, um, the actual contacts where it's charging the, the grass and then I don't have to worry about popping myself. So then you just press the button, red button on the side, and just give a little shake. Shake, 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 shake. Shake it until you um, find that you have the density that you're looking for. Oh, another thing, notice the, the um, rock inside. Uh, that's just to help the grass um, shake a little more evenly in, and easily inside as sometimes it tends to clump up. When you're done, touch the top, you'll hear the pop so you can discharge that. Otherwise you will accidentally shock yourself again when you go to remove the cap. Done that, been there. And then you can just tap off your extra grass and you've got a really nice application of static grass. Nothing matted, nice and even, as dense as you like, just keep shaking until you get the desired density. I thought though that it might be interesting to do a very quick test with a longer static grass, which I've never done. So I'm gonna shake this out here, and I'm gonna put in, keep this in frame, I'm gonna put in some six millimeter grass. Now I bought this um, this is um, a Knock brand uh, static grass, and I bought this a while ago, and it's six millimeters long, and I realized right away that there's no way I'm ever going to apply this because it already starts to mat up because of the long fibers. See if I can show you how long they are. These are really, really, come on, focus for me. There we go. These are really long fibers, six mil to over half a centimeter long. And I realized that without a static grass applicator, they'll never really look right unless you want a matted look. But I thought for today, I've never done this before. Let's try the six mil. Let's get in a little bit in there. Everybody's always clamoring me for to do tutorials. I hope this counts as a, somewhat of a tutorial. Um, Let's put a little glue on there. I'm actually kind of excited about the six mil grass, although I haven't been exploring it yet, obviously. But um, you know, it might be a way to really add some variety and some height textures. And I'd like to actually explore putting static grass over traditional ground flock and to give, you know, again, multiple textures, multiple heights. That's where you really start to get a lot of your realism in your um, terrain and your dioramas and uh, similar. So. Um, once again, 
just give the button a little push, put your probe on the uh, side, and let's give it a little bit of a shake. Now, I'm going to hold it a little bit closer because these fibers are longer, and I want to make sure I'm pulling on them with the static charge as much as I can to get them to stand up. Now, if you get too close to your probe, you will hear it start to pop, um, so you should back off just a little bit from it. Let's just keep, let's fill this in a little bit. Let's get a sense of what this really looks like. I think this is going to look um, pretty amazing, actually. Don't forget discharge. And then we'll tap that off. And let's take a look at what the 6 mil looks like. Oh my god, that looks fantastic. <laughs> let's see, uh, if it'll focus, come on. Don't give me a hard time here. i got better things to do. There we go. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. So there's a little example of what a static grass applicator can do for you. If you're interested in one, I recommend the scooter stick. I've been very pleased with it. I think it's an excellent value at its price point. Um, if you want to build your own, there are some videos out on YouTube on how to build one out of um, electric fly swatters and the like. I don't recommend doing anything more powerful than that unless you actually know something about electricity. As, um, like I said, even with this, using it, you know, trying not to be foolish, I've gotten a couple good pops out of it that have really, you know, they, they woke me up I was like okay I'm gonna respect this tool a little bit more um, you know nothing life-threatening but you know you are if you're gonna mess with voltage alterations you know stepping up voltages um, you want to be careful so use some common sense and um, if you're like me and you know just enough about electricity to hurt yourself you'll probably get the scooter stick so I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the uh, realm of battle boards as well as taking a look at the scooter stick get two for one for today um, and if you have any questions about static grass applicators, you can ask me, um, but I'm not a technical expert on electronics. I can't provide you with details about, you know, how the wiring is done. Again, that's why I bought one. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of sources on YouTube, though, that you might be able to inquire about that. Um, the big, I think it's the big 61, also has the um, uh, build it yourself out of the fly swatter version, um, which is kind of a nice really inexpensive alternative, especially if you're just doing miniatures where you're going to make very, very small applications. You're not trying to do large areas. But of course, for me, somebody who's doing terrain and I have to do, um, let's see, a Roma battle board is um, uh, for 24 square feet. Um, I need a, something a little bit more powerful and something that's going to put out grass a little bit faster. So, um, But even saying that, it is considerably uh, more time involved than actually just using regular flock, so be aware of that as well. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of shaking and a lot of trying to keep the probe from messing up glue areas and you know keeping it off to the side and there's a little bit of management that has to go on with wires and whatnot. So it definitely adds some time, but I think the end product that it produces is worth it, and uh, hopefully you do too. So thanks for watching uh, once again. I do appreciate it. Please feel free to leave comments and questions down below, and keep your eye on the channel. I've got. But, um, several more videos in the queue uh, that I'll get to as soon as I can. So keep your eye out and I'll talk to you soon.